Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening and welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 23rd of May. PM Modi says India will work for inclusive and flexible Indo-Pacific economic framework in Tokyo. Pakistan PM accuses Imran Khan out to start civil war after PTI chairman calls for march to Islamabad. And Sri Lankan students struggle to find transportation for exams due to fuel shortage. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is on a two-day visit to Tokyo to participate in the Quad Summit with the leaders of Japan, the US and Australia. On Monday, PM Modi met various leaders from the Japanese business community and attended the meeting in which U.S. President Joe Biden officially launched his long-awaited economic framework aimed at countering growing Chinese influence in Asia. PM Modi said India will work for inclusive and flexible Indo-Pacific economic framework. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived on a two-day visit to Japan on Monday to attend Third Quad Leaders Summit, a strategic security dialogue between Australia, India, Japan and the United States. Upon arrival, he was received by cheering Indian and Japanese community. PM Modi held meetings with top Japanese business leaders ahead of the Quad Leaders Summit. He held discussions with Chief Executive of Technology Investors SoftBank Group Corporation Masayoshi Sun. They discussed India's strides in the world of startups, opportunities in research, technology and ways to boost investment linkages. He also met Suzuki Motor Corp patriarch Osamu Suzuki and its president and CEO Toshihiro Suzuki. In a separate meeting with the chief of Uniqlo parent Fast Retailing Co Limited, Modi urged the retailer to invest in India's upcoming all-in-one mega textile parks. PM Modi later participated in the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity IPEF event that was launched by U.S. President Joe Biden. The new grouping is apparently aimed at countering China's assertiveness in the region. Biden said 13 countries including Japan and the United States are part of the framework. Other countries include South Korea, Australia and some Southeast Asian nations. During the event, Prime Minister Modi called for an inclusive and flexible Indo-Pacific economic framework. Excellency, Bharat, an inclusive or flexibility, flexible Indo-Pacific economic framework के निर्माण के लिए आप सभी के साथ काम करेगा। मेरा मानना है कि हमारे बीच रेजिलियंस सप्लाई चेंज के तीन मुख्य आधार होने चाहिए। Trust, transparency, and timeliness. The Indian Prime Minister later interacted with top executives and CEOs from over 30 Japanese companies. He apprised the Japanese business leaders of the recent reforms undertaken by India to improve ease of doing business and invited them to make an India for the world. He later addressed members of Indian diaspora in Tokyo. And moving on, death toll climbed to at least 24 in India's flood-hit northeastern Assam state on Monday as six more people reportedly died due to rain-related incidents while the situation remained grim. Pre-monsoon heavy rains since earlier this month have caused River Brahmaputra and its tributaries to swell in Assam, inundating several villages and forcing thousands to flee to safer areas. Authorities are conducting rescue and relief operations on war footing with disaster management personnel also roped in. However, heavy rainfall coupled with thunderstorms that lashed parts of northern India on Monday, including in capital New Delhi, came as a relief for residents who were reeling from the long-spanning heat wave. The rainfall also led to traffic congestion and water logging in some parts of the national capital and its neighbouring Gurugram city. 
And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has accused ousted Premier Imran Khan of triggering a civil war after the opposition leader announced a long march rally to Islamabad on May 25th to demand dissolution of assemblies and early elections. Sharif said the nation will hold Khan by the caller for his nefarious designs. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has alleged that PTI Chairman Imran Khan wants a civil war in the country after the opposition leader on Sunday announced a long march rally to capital Islamabad on May 25 to demand dissolution of assemblies and a date for elections. This comes as local media reported last week that the ruling PMLN and its allies have reached a consensus to complete their term until 2023 suggesting there will be no elections this year while the country faces a political and economic crisis. Former Premier Imran Khan has been holding rallies around the country, blaming the US of conspiring to topple his government and has demanded snap elections. PM Shehbaz Sharif warned the nation will hold Khan by the collar for his nefarious designs. अपना सिविल वॉर करना चाहता है तो उसकी बहुत बड़ी भूल है पाकिस्तान के आम उसका उसका गरेबान पकड़ेंगे मीनवाइल पीएमएलएन वाइस प्रेसिडेंट मरियम नवाज ऑन ट्विटर सेड दैट व्हेनेवर पाकिस्तान इज मूविंग टुवर्ड्स प्रोग्रेस इमरान खान एंड हिज मॉब लॉन्च एन अटैक ऑन द कंट्री इंटीरियर मिनिस्टर राणा सनाउल्लाह ड्यूरिंग अ टीवी इंटरव्यू सेड द गवर्नमेंट वुड डिसाइड वेदर द पीटीआई लॉन्ग मार्च शुड बी अलाउड टू एंटर इस्लामाबाद he said personally he wanted to detain Khan for three days in the same cell where he was imprisoned for months in a cooked-up drug smuggling case. Three days behind bars will wipe politics out of him, he said. And moving on, residents of Gilgit Baltistan have expressed anger and concern over dilapidated conditions of bridges and roads in the illegally occupied territory, which makes travelling riskier for them. They have warned if the Pakistan government will not take their demands for overall seriously, they will be forced to hold mass protest. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have lamented government's apathy to repair bridges and roads in the illegally occupied territory, which are in a dilapidated condition and make travelling riskier and a difficult task. Residents have claimed that despite several reminders, no maintenance has been done by the administration and they have to do everything on their own. They warned if the government will not take their demands seriously, then they will be forced to hold a sit-in protest. ये तकरीबन 50 साल पहले लोग अपने मदद आप लोगों ने ये पुल को तैयार किया हुआ था उसके बाद अभी तक जिसके मेंटेनेंस का जो भी काम होता है तो यहां के मुकामी लोग यहां आते ये पुल के हवाले से मतलब जितने भी इसके वर्किंग होती है इसके मेंटेनेंस का काम होता है इसका पेट वर्क होता है तो यहां के लोकल लोग यहां की पेट वर्क और इधर का काम करते होते हैं तो मैं मुझे हैरत होती है कि इंतजामिया को बार-बार बताने के बावजूद यहां के एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन है गजर की उनको बार-बार बताने के बावजूद भी इस पुल के ऊपर कोई मतलब एक्शन नहीं लिया जाता Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have long blamed that they have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of Islamabad, while corruption and inadequacies in the system have turned the region backward. And in news from Afghanistan, female presenters and local TV stations in Afghanistan on Sunday followed the new Taliban ruling that they must cover their faces when on air. They went on air with faces covered but voiced their frustration as well. Since seizing power in Afghanistan last year, the Taliban have increasingly imposed restrictions on women's lives in recent weeks. Female presenters on local TV stations in Afghanistan voiced their frustrations on Sunday over a new Taliban ruling that they must cover their faces when on air. Taliban's Ministry of Vice and Virtue named Sunday morning as the final deadline, calling this order mandatory. The ruling was announced last week and comes days after authorities ordered women to cover their faces in public. A return of their past hardline rule and an escalation of restrictions that are causing anger at home and abroad. When I was in the hospital, 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 and I was in the hospital. Today, we have a lot of people in the hospital. 
Earlier, the U.S. Special Envoy for Afghanistan, Thomas West, said that he and Reena Amiri, U.S. Envoy for Afghan Women and Human Rights, spoke with Taliban's Foreign Minister, Amir Khan Muttaki, during which they conveyed unified international opposition to ongoing and expanding restrictions on women and girls' rights and role in society. Meanwhile, as foreign powers have condemned the Taliban's latest rules, ordering mandatory face coverings for females, sales of the hijab in capital Kabul are picking up, as women in Afghanistan grapple with how the new order would be practically enforced, with some joining protests and others describing their opposition. The consequences of disobedience are aimed at a woman's closest male family member, ranging from a warning to imprisonment. Women's rights made progress after a US-led invasion toppled the Taliban government in 2001, with women getting jobs and proper education. The Taliban says it has changed since its last rule, but in recent months added regulations limiting women's movement without a male chaperone. Older girls are also yet to be allowed back to schools and colleges. And moving on to news from Sri Lanka, students across Sri Lanka on Monday struggled to find transportation for reaching examination centres due to the fuel shortage amid the worst economic crisis in the country's history. The island nation is facing a dire shortage of foreign exchange, fuel and medicines and economic activity has slowed to a crawl. Sri Lanka's crucial general certificate of education GCE ordinary level examinations commenced on Monday with students struggling to find transportation to reach the examination centers due to the ongoing fuel shortage amid the worst economic crisis in the country's history. Public transport in the island nation has been depleted and traffic is light as most people are staying at home because of the scarcity of petrol. Over 517,490 candidates are sitting for the GCE exams, which will run until June 1 at 3,844 examination centers. Meanwhile, doctors have said that the shortage of medicines caused by the crisis could soon cause deaths as hospitals are forced to postpone life-saving procedures because they do not have the necessary drugs. The country imports 80% of its medical supplies, but with foreign currency reserves running out, essential medications are disappearing from shelves and the healthcare system is close to collapse, according to healthcare workers. Earlier on Sunday, a ship carrying essential supplies of rice, milk and other essential goods from India worth 2 billion rupees anchored at Colombo port, bringing some temporary relief for Sri Lanka. Former Sri Lankan cabinet minister Namal Rajapaksa hailed the move and said India has been a big brother to the country throughout the years. India has placed nearly 3 billion US dollars to cash trap Sri Lanka through currency swaps and credit lines for essential goods since January to help it recover from the crisis. And the indigenous Kirith community of Nepal over the weekend celebrated a Bholi festival by performing traditional Sakela dance with much fanfare, which pays tributes to the gods while praying for good health, good harvest, peace and prosperity. The indigenous Kirat community of Nepal celebrated Ubhauli festival, their new year over the weekend, with much gusto in Kathmandu. Hundreds of men and women clad in traditional attire observed the festival in Kathmandu by performing Sakela dance, beating the drums, cymbals and exchanging greetings with each other. They worshipped their land and ancestors in hopes of getting better crops, health and prosperity. It is believed that this festival marks the start of the agricultural season. It is celebrated every year on Baishak Sulka Purnima on the same day as Buddha Purnima in the Nepali month of Baishak. अहिले हाम्रो उभौली पर्व भनेको चाहिँ हामीले जुन अन्न बाली हामी सुरु गर्छौं त्यसलाई उभौली पर्व माथि जान्छ अनि त्यसलाई चाहिँ हामीले एउटा कुल पितृ अब हाम्रो देवाली हो यो है हामी हामी सबै अन्न बाली कोदोको जाँड एताउति चढाएर आफ्नो भस पिसाब पहिचान देखाएर आफ्नो मौलिक 
While Ubhauli is celebrated in the summer, the Udhauli is celebrated during winter season in the month of Mangsil by the Kirat community to express their gratitude towards nature for delivering them a good harvest. Sakela dance has high significance and importance in both the festivals. It has been danced and followed for ages, but inside the Rai community itself, the tradition of Sakela dance is slowly facing the threat of extinction. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.